Spring's just about on us and we're fresh back from the British Shooting Show with some fantastic new night vision products to cover on this show and in the following months. On this month, we're going to cover the brand new Starlight Arrow, which is a rear-mounted digital add-on, ideal for parallax adjustable day scopes. We've also got Pulsar's brand new N750A DigiSight, and we're going to cover probably one of the best handheld thermal images you're going to see for a very long time, the Thermotechnics Ticam 750. Springs on us, folks. 2014's moving forward fast. Welcome to the Night Vision Show. On the night vision industry, there are many different products from dedicated rifle scopes to image intensifiers and digital add-ons, if you like. Um, fresh from the British Shooting Show uh, and to see its launch at the British Shooting Show is the brand new Starlight Arrow. Um, and this is a rear mounted digital night vision device and it's to be used with parallax adjustable day scopes. Um, it's quite an interesting feature, it's rear mounted. Uh, and in the coming sort of weeks and months, we're going to see if it will compete with the likes of Pulsar's DFA 75, which is a forward attachment. Um, and we know from the specifications that are going to be three different models from standard right up to a high spec uh, Starlight Arrow, which includes a Quantum Firefly. It's good to see digital um, devices coming out onto the market. There are all sorts of different ones out there from people that are making them in the bedrooms right up to companies like Starlight that are producing top of the range image intensifiers. So this new digital add-on looks very, very interesting. And we're gonna to speak to Paul from Scott Country a bit more in depth about the Starlight Arrow. I'm joined by Paul from Scott Country. Um, as I was saying, Starlight Arrow got released at the British Shooting Show 2014. And um, Paul, this looks like a really interesting uh, rear-mounted digital add-on. Tell us a bit more about it. Um, this is the Starlight digital rear mounted add-on, so it's a digital night vision device which you can connect to your day scope to transform it into night vision. So yeah. it's the first from Starlight, they've done image intensifier add-ons, but this is the first digital device. As I mentioned before, there are lots of digital devices now appearing in the night vision market. Um, Starlight are well known for the Archer and the Longbow image intensifiers. There are a lot of people that are making digital devices, you know, in, in their garden sheds, in their bedrooms. We expect Starlight to do a really good job of this and from obviously these pre-production samples it looks like the user experience is going to be quite easy and quite basic. It is, yeah, it's a very basic unit. This is a pre-production model so the day scope adapter mount is going to be much more refined. Mm -hmm. These we actually picked up the night before the British shooting show yeah, on the yeah. M6 on the way down we collected them. So although the internals are production, the exterior, the mount for the illuminator um, and the day scope adapter will be refined. Yeah, and there was a lot of interest at the show about this device. You know, again, people, Starlight's a recognised brand. People want to see what, what the recognised brands are bringing out. Um, what, what kind of person is going to use this? Ideal for people, um, vermin control for rabbits, rats, and for short range fox okay. incentivire as well. So it's got a detection range um, up to 200 metres. So okay. realistically, with a decent quality illuminator like the Quantum Firefly or a Nightmaster or a T20, you'd be looking 100 metres, 150 metres usable distance, which is great for rim fire and air rifle. Yeah. And, and, and it's all you need. And again, is this argument about shooting at night time. Day in, day out, week in, week out, we hear the same thing about people saying, yeah, you know, I can shoot it over 300 metres in complete darkness. Realistically, and from a common sense point of view, you're not going to do that, are you? And this kind of device, you don't need to, do you? There's different specs with it as well, isn't there? So. There is, yeah. Essentially, it means someone who's got a decent quality day scope on their rifle. Yeah, they don't yeah. want to dedicate a rifle to night vision. They can go out if they're doing a bit of foxing or a bit of rat, and they can put on their device yeah. um, onto the day scope and transform into a decent night vision device, which, you know, 100, 150 metres at night on yeah. a 178 HMR, nobody really generally shoots that much further than that. Yeah, it's not safely, certainly. So from a price point of view, again, it's, it's affordable night vision. You don't have to go spending hundreds and thousands of pounds on, 
on, on night vision, you know. You don't, no, look, the standard model starts at 3499 without an mm. IR, so you can put your own IR on the top, or 399 with a decent quality IR, and 499 with a quantum IR. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, it, it doesn't cost a fortune. If you look at the Photon, for example, at just under £400, that's been a fantastically popular device, mm -hmm. but you have to dedicate a rifle to it. So, although you can use the Photon during the day, it's never going to give you as good quality images as a normal day yeah. scope. With this, you simply detach it, and you've got your day scope. Okay. It, it doesn't look the best of looking digital night it's no it's no page three model is it mm. to be fair um, and some of you watching this might think oh, it, look, it looks a bit looks a bit ugly there are going to be some changes made this is a pre-production model is it it is yeah there'll be changes made to make it more aesthetically pleasing but at the end of the day it's an entry level budget night vision device it doesn't have to be a page three model it it does what it says yeah. on the tin well there you go folks that's the brand new starlight arrow uh, we are going to be featuring this again on the show in the coming months. Um, I think keep in touch with Scott Country and their website for updates. Um, there are going to be a lot of people talking about this. It certainly um, raised a few eyebrows. It's from Starlight and uh, it will be available from Scott Country. On the Night Vision Show, we like to test out new products and we like to test out products that really do stand out about everything else. This is a Thermotechnics Ticam 750. It's a military spec thermal imager. <laughs> it looks like something from the future. Paul uh, from Scott Country is joined by me. This really is top of the range thermal imaging, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yep, the, the Ticam 750 is um, a very, very top specification, very, very top priced as well, but it has a detection range for a man-sized object beyond two kilometres and a detection range for a vehicle beyond four kilometres. That is a phenomenal distance. Now, uh, we've obviously been testing it. You, we've got the footage to show you on it as well. It's got a huge lens on it. Now, that zoom, four kilometres, it, really, it must have a a really powerful zoom tell us a bit about how that works yeah. um, it's got a four times zoom okay. it's all controlled by motors here under your thumbs so you have motors here to power out the zoom okay. and to power your focus so literally you can spot an object a wave detect a heat source and zoom in for detail to find out actually what the heat source is some of you watching this might be thinking yeah okay this is going to cost a lot of money why wouldn't i just use something like a, a small handheld monocular port just how can we summarise how how someone would use this against something like a Pulsar HD38S for example. Okay, um, the main difference is detection. The Pulsar HD38S, um, it's a great bit of kit for, for everyone from gamekeepers to search and rescue to vermin controllers um, and for obs observation of wildlife. Um, it's limited to 900 metres detection. Now mm. I say limited, most people, um, 900 metres is beyond where they would even consider looking. So HD30S as a standard device is more than enough for most. However, people, um, say for example, estate owners who want to scan a riverbank over, say, a couple of miles and check if there's any poachers around, this is what this device would come into. Uh, and again, it's personal preference. Do, you know, if, if you own a small farm, you're not really going to be needing this. Like, like Paul says, you're better off with a HD38S. That saying, you might be a boat owner, you might do a lot of, uh, you might work in the marine environment. That is a perfect thing for search and rescue. Uh, and, and for, you know, if you're in a busy estuary uh, boat or shipping system, that's going to come in handy, isn't it? Um, the other thing this might be used for um, surveillance. Yep. Again, uh, police forces, private security companies. Yeah, but purely because of the detection range, you, you can simply scan a huge area very, very quickly. With a traditional night vision device, you need to know roughly where something is to have a look and see it, mm -hmm. um, or at least pick up eye shine. With this, you can scan a massive area in seconds. Um, someone lost out at sea, fallen out a kayak, for example, you can scan the surface of the sea in, in seconds with this and find out where they are. And from a detail point of view, is it a black and white heat signature you get? Or? Um, you, you can switch between black hot and white hot. Um, it's got various different modes. It has um, a covert mode where you can dim the display down so there's no glow coming back yep. or you can have a high resolution mode with 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 a lot of light spill from here but if you're using it for search and rescue the light spill is negligible if you're using it for covert surveillance then that's why you've turned that mode down the, when, when you uh, play back the footage this this can cause it 14 gig memory yep. in, internal video capability of, for the storage reason this has got a unique feature it's, it's got a laser target 
type system. Yeah, is that right? you're, you're right about the built-in storage. It's got it'll record up to about 11 hours, and it's built-in hard drive. It comes with its own software where you can mm. you can download to your PC. And um, yeah, the laser. Uh, yeah, it's not something normal people would use for 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 vermin control for surveillance checking. Um, it's purely a targeting device. So the military would target something with the laser, and then you know look and see where yeah. see what's happening with the thermal. And the footage that uh, you're seeing while we're talking here, it, it looks like an Apache helicopter gunship gun cam in the infrared. Essentially, uh, the, the technology is the same. So. But, but it, it's, it's the same thing. This is, uh, it is a top of the range thermal imager. It's up there, it is military grade. Um, whether or not you would use it for a specific farm or hunting, personally, my point of view, you'd be better off up to 900 meters with a HD 38 Yes, People that buy this, Realistically, <laughs> not everyone can afford twenty-five thousand pounds plus for one of these. So, um, it'll be estate owners, it'll be um, professional vermin controllers who are, are are looking to see something a long, long way away that they have to get done in a, a yeah. quick time. They need to detect um, search and rescue, as you say, and and generally just for wildlife surveillance of things that have to be done in a particular time where you can scan a field very, very quickly. You know, counting a red deer population, for example, mm. you can do it in a, an evening with this. Or does it take you weeks with night vision? Yeah, so. It just gives you the scope of, of the retail market with thermal images. Yes, it's available in retail. It just shows the vast array of equipment you can get, and it, and it is available from Scott Country. So. Night vision manufacturers are always bringing out new technology and new innovations. What we're now going to look at is the latest from Pulsar, and that is the Digisight N750A. It was launched at the British Shooting Show, and I'm joined by Paul from Scott Country again. He's going to talk us through this uh, really good looking site. Yep. Um, it's the new Digisight N750A. So, um, exterior wise, it's not very much improved. There's not any differences. They're using the same chassis, it's all internal. Um, you get various things now. There's a new OLED screen inside. They've adopted the new menu system that we've seen in the Quantum HD30S. So, icons are all going yep. to be generalised with Pulsar. Um, it's a digital night vision device again, man size detection range of up to 600 metres manufacturer specification so you know with a decent illuminator yeah. t20 on the side here 200 meters usable range yeah, um, yeah lots of different improvements you had a selection before of one reticle where you could have a red dot or a green dot yep. you now get 13 user selectable reticles um, the problem they had before with the screen when you did or a dealer upgraded your reticle to a different yeah. reticle it can cause burn in the screen or memory in the screen right. now you can choose between 13 perfectly freely uh, it's something that digital Scopes, for example, um, I personally think, and I know other people in the industry will agree with me, and some of you at home there watching it, the option to change between reticles is it's just something really, really handy. You know, um, scopes can get a bit boring or they can get a bit awkward in different light conditions. 13 different reticles is ideal, but there's also a new setting, isn't there, for different weapons? There is, yeah. yeah. Essentially, as you said, with the reticles, there's various different reasons you'd want reticles. Some people mm. prefer a single point reticle, some people prefer a reticle for bracketing a target, for example, yeah, in wild yeah. boar, or some people prefer different aiming points, mm. so like a mill dot reticle for hold over yeah, and hold yeah. under. Um, the memorization system, the way it works is you have three built in memory. So if you're using a Picatinny weapon sight system where you can add and remove a weapon sight, you can, in theory, zero three different settings in your rifle. So you can have 22, 243, and 270, for example, mm. all stored in here yep. or in this case you can have a rifle set up 50 meters zero 100 meters zero 150 meters zero and you can change the settings without having to re-zero yep. your sight and i suppose the other side of it as well yes okay it's a dedicated night vision scope um, we've already looked at the starlight arrow which is an add-on it kind of now people might be thinking well i don't necessarily need to have an add-on if i can put this on three different weapons and, and off i go it, it's memorized it so it's a bit of a challenge to the add-on side of the market um, it but, is yeah. the thing that you've always got to remember when you take a night vision device weapon sight or any rifle sight off your rifle um, if you're putting it back on you should always check it in the oh, yeah, before yeah. you live fire it should always be checked to make yeah. sure you're on zero in theory yeah it'll store the three settings mm -hmm. but you need to be using a Picatinny system where you're 100% you're sure it'll be mounted the same position it was yeah. before and for those of you that are new to the night vision show or, or have not come across the Pulsar digi site before some of you may think yeah it looks a bit big and bulky it's not very heavy at all is it no it's very light 
whole thing weighs under a kilogram, so it makes very bit of difference to your rifle scope. A decent eight by fifty six Schmidt and Bender's you know, a bit yeah. heavier than this, to be honest. So yeah, it doesn't make a lot of difference, particularly in a tactical rifle like this. So. Yeah, um, I'm just going to touch on the illuminator on on the side of the um, the digi site here, Paul. This is a T20. Yep, this is a T20. Um, we do various illuminators at Scott Country, from Nightmaster through to Laser Looks, which are very very top end, yeah, yeah. through to Pulsar's own X850. There's a whole spectrum from illuminators out there. Some suit some people, some don't. Um, it purely depends on your specification. Okay. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, what, how you feel about an illuminator, some yep. people, they, their eyes are suited better to particular types of illuminator. One of the things we're going to do in future episodes, um, I think probably later on into the spring and into the summer, we're going to take some of the top illuminators and, and pit them against each other in a sort of a competition type thing and give an open, honest opinion of which ones we think perform best and we'll do that with maybe static targets yep. um, and some moving targets as well. The Digisite N750A um, is brand new out from Pulsar and um, yeah, I think that's going to be very popular. Um, I like the look of it and I'm sure um, we're going to get some uh, good reviews from the likes of Scott Country and other people in the industry. So there you go folks, that's the end of the, another great episode of the Night Vision Show. We've seen brand new Digisite N750A from Pulsar and you know we do really expect big things from this. We've seen the brand new Starlight Arrow add-on and in the next episode we're going to be showing you some more footage of that um, and we've seen the amazing Thermotechnics Ticam 750 which at the moment really is the Ferrari of handheld thermal images. In the coming months we're going to be covering some new clothing from Yakety Yak. We're going to cover some new thermal images. Stay tuned folks, it's going to be a big year for night vision in 2014. Thank you for watching, see you next month. Mm.